Hi, my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the Fish Vet. Today, I'm going to take you to meet Rin, who's actually survived hole in the head as well as a house fire. So come on and meet Rin. So here's Rin now. You can see that he's all healed up and happy and healthy. Um, we'll come and talk about the problems that Rin had before that led to the hole in the head problems. So, Rain was acquired from a pet store three years ago and they were instructed on feeding and care and also aquarium furnishings. One of, there are a couple of things that went wrong that caused this chronic problem of hole in the head disease. Uh, the first thing was that they were advised as a substrate is to use playground sand. The problem with playground sand is that because it's so pale, it can cause fish some stress because Fish prefer darker substrate compared to a reflective uh, white one. The other problem with the fineness of the sand is that when you build it up to a high, a, a thick layer, what can happen is that you can build up anaerobic conditions. And you notice when anaerobic conditions happen is that when you move the sand around, bubbles will bubble out of the sand. And this is hydrogen sulfide, which is toxic to fish. And another telltale sign of anaerobic conditions is that you will have black discoloration to the bottom of your rocks and in your sand as well. And the third problem with this playground sand is that it altered the pH. So the pH for this tank went up to above 8 to 8.2 and the preference range for Oscars is a pH of between 6 and 7. Another problem was that the pet shop owners when they sold red to our, our fish keeper is that they were told to feed him once every two days and this was very much minimal uh, not enough to uh, fulfill its daily requirements so uh, we calculated that he was probably only getting about 25 percent of its daily requirement so for red we fixed up the problem by having new gravel increase the feeding rate and also a course of metronidazole uh, for hole in the head disease. And just when we thought we got the problem uh, fixed, another issue came about and that was the fire. So you can see here is where the trouble then began. There's a dishwasher here that caught on fire and the flames actually leapt up over the fish tank. Um, you can see the remains of coffee beans as well, so that sort of blew up and threw a lot of the coffee material and soot and everything into the tank. Uh, the tank is normally has the lid open, so there's a lot of smoke went in and probably dis most, most likely dissolved into the water. Um, you could see a lot of black soot and carbon on the water surface. So, when our owner came in, running into the uh, house, he had three pets to look after. One was his dog, his cat, and his fish, Red. And basically, from standing approximately in this area, he could not even see the tank. He thought the tank had been blown up and everything is gone. Um, but it wasn't until he went, had some doors open and he looked around that he could still see that the tank was still there and the fish was still fine or not quite, was sort of hiding in the corner. Um, the fireman came, extinguished the fire very quickly and the first thing he did after getting, I guess, um, after getting his pet dog and cat out is to do a 50% water change because you could see that Red was not doing well. And even after the 50% water change, there was some soot on the water surface, Red was still cowering in the corner. Uh, that's when the owner rang me back uh, to come out the same night to try and attend to him to see what else we could do. So what we did was that because we've got this stuff in the water dissolved, probably burnt, bits of burnt plastic or dissolved in the water, some sort of toxin, we thought that we would use some sort of a chemical filtration. Now the most common chemical filter that you would have is activated charcoal. So this is activated charcoal. It basically looks like burnt wood, um, it's finely ground and basically you, you would pour this into a, uh, a bag that looks similar to either a stocking or a 
wash bag for your intimates. Uh, <laughs> and you'd put this inside your filter. But we we're thinking that we have some other better product um, that is new to the trade. It's called a poly filter. And this is able to absorb a lot more different toxins uh, that a activated charcoal can't. Um, and so it just looks like this. Uh, it feels like filter wool uh, with a coating on it. So what we'll do is we'll disconnect the filter and take a look at the poly filter that's already in there. Yeah. Okay, so now to remove uh, the, the lid, we just have to release some of the pressure. Here is the poly filter. You can see it's gone a really dark brown color. So it's a lot of either carbon or organics and other things like that that it's absorbed. So this poly filter actually started off as white as this. Mm. So we're going to cut more of these filters as a replacement. So there we have three pieces. The reason why we cut them as uh, snug as possible is so that we don't create any sort of channels where the water would preferentially flow through. Uh, we also want to maximize our use because these this is not cheap. So we'll, we'll put these in there. And we'll stack these up nice and snug. Put the lid back on. So before we put the lid back on, we want to make sure that we uh, add more water onto here so that we can start the, uh, so that there's no sort of dead space with air in there. So we've got some more water from his tank. I'm just going to top it up till it's full. And because we're doing it outside here, it can overflow a little bit. That's fine. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, now place him back into red tank. So we've refitted. Uh, red filter and we'll turn it back on. Hit it DJ! If you look at the image on the left, it shows how red originally presented with hole-in-the-head lesions. They are white, crateriform, deep with exposed dermis and possibly bone. And if you look at the video on the right, this is three weeks after treatment. His lesions have begun to heal and you can see the grey tissue that's fresh new skin covering up the lesion. We expect red to make a full recovery in the next three to four months. So that's all for now. Hopefully you found this video interesting. Make sure you subscribe to get updates of our future videos and have a fantastic week.